and gentlemen, please welcome CTO and co-founder Tom Hatch. All right, I always want to start by telling everybody thank you again for coming. I cannot tell you how overwhelming, how wonderful, how exciting it is to put on SaltConf, to see the wonderful talks, to see how much meat we have in our community and with our users and customers. It's just incredibly exciting and humbling to be able to uh, be with all of you. Now, I want to talk to you today about where salt came from, but also with, it, with respect to salt as a business and making an open source business that makes sense as an open source business, something that makes money by giving things away for free. <laughs> Which, uh, as, any, as many of you can imagine, that's a very difficult way to raise funding at the beginning of uh, <laughs> trying to get a company off the ground. And so I want to talk a little bit about where salt came from, but I'll give you a little different story than uh, the one that I usually give. So five years ago, um, almost to the day, I had a major surgery. Um, for seven years, I had had chronic headaches that never went away. And I'd been misdiagnosed over and over again with these headaches. And one day, my left leg stopped working and I fell down at work and thought, I think I've been misdiagnosed. <laughs> and so I decided to see a different doctor. <laughs> and they discovered that I had a brain tumor. A uh, very, very frightening thing. They rushed me into surgery within a few days. They said that it was a slow-growing tumor and that if it wasn't treated quickly, that I would, I would die. And it was growing at the base of my skull. Fortunately, it wasn't on brain. It was just in my skull. And they rushed me into surgery. They cut me open, get all the tumor out. Fortunately, it was benign. So there's no indication that anything should come back, which is a huge relief, of course. But when I got out of surgery, I couldn't walk. I'd suffered severe nerve damage, and my left vocal cord was paralyzed, so I could barely speak. And it took me about three months to get to the point where I could walk again. And I could not speak clearly for two years. And so about eight months or so after this surgery, I was thinking to myself, what, is, what am I going to do with my life? I couldn't talk. It was still painful and difficult to walk. I was able to work, fortunately, because I'm in computers, and <laughs> this still worked. And I started to think, I need to do something big. I can't just piddle my way through life. I don't have that opportunity. And so I started thinking about how I could make something that had a major impact, how I could make something that could help me take care of my family. And so that was one of the strong motivators for SALT. I can't tell you how grateful I was of the fact that my voice literally came back three days before I went to the first conference where I was peddling salt, it was the SCALE conference. Gareth Greenaway is here, one of the organizers of the SCALE conference, a wonderful man. So I was, when I was at that conference, I was only able to talk for three days after many, many, many uh, throat and voice surgeries. And so when I made salt, that was my motivation. Knowing the fragility of life, my own life, knowing the importance of making a real impact in the world 
and how easy it is and how fleeting it is for us to, well, have what we have. And so when I started SALT, I thought to myself, I want to make a business. I don't want to just make a project that's cool. And so I thought through business models and decided to go with something open source. The motivation for going with, with open source stems in a really big way from the importance of having continual in innovation. I've always been angry and displeased with the concept of making a technology and then holding on to it with desperation with all of the legal prowess and power that you have to just bleed as much as you can out of your customers. I looked at companies that were able to continually innovate and said, no, that is how to build a company and a business that has impact. And the best way to innovate is to get as many minds involved as possible. Because I recognize that I do not see everything that is going on around me in the world. I am not pretentious in saying that I know how you should do everything. And you've probably heard me say that many times before. And so hence comes the motivation. The idea, the concept to say, if I want to build a progressive business, I need a model that makes innovation continue. And so as I talk through open source as a business, and I talk about the fact that, yes, we're making proprietary software, I want to talk about how these things come together, how open source and proprietary software work together in a way to make viable business sense. Now, one of the big benefits that we've got is that we've got the second mover advantage. We're able to look back and we're able to see what many, many other people, many, many other companies and concepts have done in the past and learn from what they've done well and the mistakes that they've made. This has been a huge benefit for SALT. And one of the things that I want to emphasize is that many of the companies that, uh, and many of the open source companies that we've seen in the past, I feel and have always felt very strongly that open core is a bad model. And the reason for that is that as soon as you take your main platform and make it open core, your innovation stops. The most important component of developing a tech company is to feed continual innovation. Continually new ideas need to get into the software. They need to get into the business, the business's DNA and all these, you know, businessy catch phrases. I'm being terrible, I'm using more of them are very, very important. Okay. And as soon as a company goes open core, it becomes much more difficult for them to continue and build out new ideas. And so beyond that, I wanted to talk a little bit about also some of the concepts that we have at SaltStack to try and build not only a great company, but a great community, which I'm very pleased to say I think we've done a rather good job of at the caliber of individuals that we have here today. Now, many of you are, are aware that uh, our new codenaming scheme uses the periodic table. I'm really excited for boron because I keep forgetting how to spell beryllium. But when we look at the elements of creating an open source community and creating a good business and a good business culture and all these sorts of things, very early on we decided to have a no jerks policy. There have been plenty of times when I've had to take an employee aside and calmly explain to them that even though they didn't realize it, that they had posted something online that was getting a little too close to being a jerk. 
Many times my employees have pulled me aside, and even though I didn't realize it, <laughs> I had posted something online that was beginning to make me look like a jerk. But trying to remember that, so many times people have come up to me and said, Tom, what do you do about trolls in the community? And I say to them, that's how many we've had problems with. Unfortunately, next year it'll probably be like this. <laughs> but the thing that I've found is that when someone comes in and they're upset, and we respond to them in a positive way, and we listen to them, and we say, we understand where you're coming from, and we want to work on this. We're doing our best to work on, the, on all of our problems. That they're not really trolls. That they turn around and say, oh, really? I thought I was in for a fight. But they're not. It's hard to get a fight out of us. Occasionally it happens, I know. <laughs> But so that commitment to not be jerks has been one of our core tenets. And that is why not only do we have an extremely strong community, and we've got a lot of people in the community, people come back. We have an extremely high percentage of people who commit code to salt more than once. And that is something when you look at the actual metrics, met, met, ha, gall, metrics of open source communities is something that's really rare. It's very, very common that the majority of contributors are one-timers. Okay. The next thing is that we believe in hard work. We believe in taking a challenge. One of my favorite early quotes was that I was giving a talk at a Utah Python meetup in 2011. Salt didn't even have config management at that point. <laughs> it was just, I mean, we're talking salt not dot, not dot eight. <laughs> and LinkedIn was using it back then, blows my mind. We <laughs> I go and I give a talk and I'm explaining in my talk, oh, well, I'm gonna build a config management system and I'm gonna build a, cloud management system on this, it's gotta be great. And someone in the audience leaned over and said, look at this guy. This guy's got guts, what's up with this guy? He's nuts. That is something that is very important to us. We are not afraid of the hard problems. And we are willing to work them, work them out, and we are willing to take the risks that we need to. And the end result of that commitment to be passionate, to work hard, to not be jerks, to be as nice as we can to people, even though there are plenty of times where we all yell and scream at each other in the office, oh, do you believe what somebody said? And then, oh no, but say it nicely in the return. <laughs> That's built a community of people who take care of each other a community of people who have learned to be kind and supportive of each other. I cannot tell you how many people have come in and started contributing to SALT and been terrible software engineers. Many of you are in this room. <laughs> <laughs> but within three pull requests, their code is perfect because the community has rallied around them instead of criticizing them. The community has come back and said, let me explain why this is in the lint checker even though it seems ridiculous. And that the end result is that fantastic code begins to flow and that people improve. Uh, we have a, a long list of SALT contributors who come in and substantially improve their lives through their ability to develop as a software engineer because of you and what you do in our community to help us be passionate, be kind, 
be supportive. Now, I actually don't really like this slide because it's just a rah, 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 we're awesome, we have great numbers slide. Because the important thing is the value behind the numbers, is the value of the people that are behind it. Yes, salt is used in a lot of projects. We keep finding out about new ones. <laughs> More and more systems out there are relying on SALT's orchestration. To the extent that we have had major competitors come to us and say that they want to use our orchestration with their configuration management systems. I obviously can't say who. <laughs> and the growth that we've seen is phenomenal. A curve that continually goes up. As more and more people come in, and more and more people see the salt way of building a community, of developing software, of thinking about how to solve problems that they used to think were too complex or too difficult to solve. And so we have every intention to continue to grow the project, to continue to grow the community, and we will keep doing everything that we can to support you and are grateful, deeply grateful, for everyone's willingness to support us back. Now, I've been able to give a great, endearing, heartfelt talk so far. But with any open source company, there is always an elephant in the room. And so I want everybody to look above them. And what do you see? I see a giant crystal chandelier. I see a hotel with lots of marble and granite everywhere. And if I look at the company name for salt, it is Saltstack, comma, Inc. We're not a nonprofit. <laughs> Saltstack, we are, we are in business to make money. And so what we did is that we wanted to establish a business model that allowed us to continue to build open source without it being converted into a cash cow, dead end open source project that is just trying to milk the community for money. When we looked at our early fundraising attempts, this was a major problem. Because we would go and try to raise money and all of the investors that we would talk to would say, okay, good, 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 you've got some community. Now stop building open source and build an enterprise proprietary product and that should be your model. You've got a good community, keep it, be happy. And over and over again we said, no, 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 we can't do that. That will kill us as a company. That doesn't allow us to be a progressive, forward-moving company. And so we bootstrapped the business, which has involved far less sleep than I would like. And the other thing is that we've, we've built the business backwards. When you go out and you look at the questions of how do you build a business, you go to the incubators, you go to the early angel investors, you go to all the people writing their books about it, they, they generally tell you something similar, which is build, for a tech business at least, build a GUI that's pretty that hardly does anything because that'll convince people to invest money in your product. And we said, no, we're not gonna do it that way. We're gonna build a back end that does everything and does it well and then we'll worry about making it pretty. We are far more concerned about solving real problems than just trying to bag an investor. <laughs> and so that means that we've been able to build SALT as a business in such a way that not only do we control what's going on and we are not yet beholden 
to an investment board, but it also means that we have been able to establish that the model which we have described can work and that it is worth it to do it this way. That this is what enables us again to create a progressive business, a progressive model, a progressive technology that can't just be superseded by the next guy in his basement like me. <laughs> and so that's why I want to talk about and be perfectly frank and upfront with how we're building proprietary software and not try and dance around the issue and avoid explaining, hey, this is how we see that things are done and this is how we're trying to do it. And so we will talk about the elephant in the room of how we believe that building an open source business should work. We have spent a lot of time talking to customers, talking to users, and trying to figure out what people will really pay for. We didn't want to make up the line between open and proprietary software. We wanted to find where it really existed in the minds of people. And what we discovered is that open source platforms make a lot of sense. The open source approach to create tooling and toolkits thrives. Building plugins, allowing people to build the system out to solve their problems thrives. We have worked very hard to maintain the creation of a new open source software. We are very excited about Rate, and we have put a lot of effort into it, and IOFLOW and Libnackle. Many of you were in the training that, uh, that I was able to give on Tuesday about these technologies. We're very excited about the new features that we've very recently come out with in SALT, particularly beacons and engines, which allow you to get real-time arbitrary data from your infrastructure and pipe it into the SALT bus from beacons and allows you to build much more complex reactive technologies inside of engines. And we have a lot, of more, a lot more innovation, a lot more, of more ideas, many more ideas coming down the pipe. We promise not to stop coming up with new ideas and we promise not to stop building new components to keep SALT moving forward. And we promise to continue to do everything we can to make SaltStack open, stable, faster, more efficient, and easier to use. But then the question is, guys, how do you make money? We found that enterprises, we found that there are certain businesses that want targeted products. They want something that's already wrapped up and built. And there are certain companies that want to build it themselves. The question is, is how do we as a company extract the right kind of benefit from everyone involved in the SALT ecosystem so that we can give, what, give people what they want? We have found that there are many, many corporations who want targeted systems built for them by somebody else and that they will pay money for that and that's what they wanna pay money for. And that we have discovered that when we go in and we find out who these companies are, it's very easy to sell targeted solutions to them instead of selling them a platform. And so the way in which we're doing this is very important. One, SALT is not open core. The SALT project is completely open. We don't have multiple code bases or anything of that nature. 
We have separate pieces of code that are proprietary, and we have separate pieces of code that are open. And we don't cross those lines. So for instance, we have the, the ServiceNow integration pieces that are closed. Because we've discovered that people who are willing to pay, ser pay for ServiceNow are more than happy to pay us for ServiceNow integration. <laughs> And that the enterprise GUI that we've been talking about and been uh, working very, very hard on is closed. But in response to the enterprise GUI, we have created a great deal of open source technology to support it. Now the idea being that we can create a business and what that business does is create open technology that improves our ability to create proprietary technology. And that it is a business that makes proprietary technology which improves our ability to make open source technology. If we cannot build a business that does have the yin and yang, that does have both sides of the picture helping each other, then we have sh truly failed as entrepreneurs and truly failed in business because it means that we have lost sight of what it is that we are trying to do as a company and that we have lost sight of wanting to build a company that will continue to grow in the future so as we develop more open source technology, it does become the rising tide that lifts all boats. And it enables us to build better and better and better targeted solutions for the people who want to pay us money for them. And continues to allow us to get deeper into the minds of people and convert more people to the salt way, whether they're going to be members of our wonderful community, or if they're going to pay us, or as we're discovering is very beneficial for many of our customers, both. So, we do still have the, uh, the Enterprise GUI demo out there. We've worked very hard to talk about uh, a lot of the new open source features that we've, that we've been bringing out. And so I want to wrap up once more by, again, very sincerely thanking everyone for coming. Um, I am very, I can't say it enough how overwhelmed and grateful I am for the willingness that people have had to rally around the ideas and the work that we've put into SALT. And I hope that our business model is one that will make sense. It has been one of the things that I have been the most worried about is making sure that as we move forward as a corporation, we do it in such a way that does not step on or lessen the importance of all of the contributions which we have received and hope to continue to receive, and that it does not undermine in any way the community that we have built so that we can continue to build it. We want to be a bigger community by the end of next year than we are, to, there are now. We want to influence more people and we, more importantly, want to be influenced by more people. And so, thank you so much for everything that you've done. Thank you for convincing your colleagues to look at SALT even when they didn't want to. Thank you for putting up with bugs in the code. Our QA efforts have uh, really, we, we put a lot more effort into them. <laughs> and thank you for your willingness to help us fix problems 
and extend salt in ways that empower so many more people. So I'm going to now seed the stage. But again, thank you all for everything that you've given us. And I hope and will continue to work as hard as I can to keep giving you as much as we can. Thank you. <laughs>